we're all the way on the fourth video. The fourth video, now we're putting in the camera. And if you missed the last three, if you don't know the basics about lighting and moving objects around, adding objects into Blender, I definitely suggest going back and watching those because this isn't going to make that much sense otherwise. But if you already know that stuff, feel free to tag along and hopefully this is interesting for you as well. This, this is where we're starting to really feel like it's photography, camera, photography, maybe video. But this, this is where it all starts to just get tied together. So here we go. So as I'm sure is shocking to you by this point, we're going to click on add up here. And if you keep going down, there's a camera that's been there the whole time. But before we actually click on that, the camera gets added from the view that you're looking at. So if we're looking at it like this, then you add a camera, the camera will be added from that view, which is an annoying place to start. So you can click on these individual axes here. Like click on the Y, click on the Y axis and that will have a straight on, at least for me, the, where these things have landed, that gets us straight on. So now that I'm straight on from this Y angle, I'm going to click on add and then go to camera. And again, it adds it from our origin point, which is in the middle. So it's like underneath the product for some reason. I'm going to press G for grab, Y to keep it on the Y axis. I'm going to just drag it back to maybe like where a camera would be. So this little thing right here is our camera. Now over here in these properties, if you click on this thing that looks like a printer, the output properties, that's where our resolution lives. So right here we're 1080 by 1920, which makes sense for a video, but I don't know, for Instagram, like we'll work in squares. So you can just click on these numbers and change it. So right now we're in 1080 by 1080, and you can see that the actual shape of our little camera thing changes as well. Now that is a square. I'm also going to go out on a limb and say that this camera needs to be higher. So I'm going to click on this, this blue for the Z axis and lift it up. So that looks like relatively where a camera would be. Now, over here, you see this little old timey camera icon. If you click on that, it'll take you to the view of the camera and voila. So this is what our camera's seeing. You can still zoom in and out, but this box, you can see outside the box is kind of grayed out and then inside the box is not. And this is what the camera's seeing. But if you, you know, scroll around on your mouse or kind of move around over here, it'll take you out of that view. So click on it, you have what your camera's seeing and then you can move around otherwise and it'll kind of snap you out of that. Now I'm going to go back into our shading workspace, this tab up here and you still see we have this old timey, we have this old timey camera icon here as well. So click on that in our shading viewport. And now you see something that looks like a fairly real image to me, honestly. And then you can change the size of these windows. If you just kind of click on the edge, you'll see that thing so I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so we can really see what's going on. And then if you click on this icon by the properties, it looks like the back of a camera. Oh no, don't need to do that. Um, so you can click this checkbox here for render region and that just blacks out everything that's not what your camera is going to see. So uh, yeah, so, so far so good. I, I, we're making some progress, I think that the reflection looks a little bit dark, but I think it looks pretty real. I think this is convincingly how light would behave in this situation, so I'm not mad at it. But we're going to dig into some camera settings. So just like these other things, just like how when you click on the light, you get a little light bulb down here for the object properties. For the camera, if you click down there, it has its own set of object properties. So this is where we have the focal length of our lens. That's right, you can change the focal length right there. So the default is 50, let's say we're at 70. Boom. Or 25, 
if that's what you wanted. But for this, let's say 70. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that right now. Then there's also depth of field. So importance alert. I would say the cycles thing is super important. I would say the second pillar of photorealism is the depth of field. I think when I look at 3D assets that people are making, one of the main things that does not feel real is this like super focus where just everything is in focus. So even if it's something like this where there's not a lot going on and there isn't a lot of depth to be had in general, I think that the depth of field gives it an added feeling of reality. So one thing that we should do before we dive into the settings for depth of field is we need to give the camera something to focus on. So I'm going to go back into our layout workspace up here. I'm going to go to add and basically right in the middle, there's something called an empty. And within that empty, there's something called a plane axis. So I'm going to click on plane axis and that goes straight to our origin point. I'm going to press G for grab and then Z, lift it up and then G, Y to move it forward. So where these lines intersect is where our camera is going to focus. So you can put this anywhere, but if a camera were auto-focusing, it would catch the front. What you want to be in focus is the front. So you could have it down here. You could probably have it up there if you wanted to. It's up to you. For now, I'm going to start. You, you can move it, obviously. And so in our collection, it's called empty. I'm going to double click that and I'm going to call that focus, which will make things easier. It'll just make things easier. So then you want to move back to your shading tab and you can see that that focus is in there. And honestly, the eyeball for the focus, you could turn that off. You don't really need to be looking at what's in focus all the time, but um, it can be on or off. When, it, when you render the image, that will not show up either way. But if it's annoying for you to just see the crosshairs like that, you could turn it off because it'll still function the way it's supposed to function. Now we're going to click back on our camera over here in our collection. So we're going to check depth of field, right? So the focus object doesn't have anything in there. We're going to click this blank thing and we're going to select focus. Then you can choose your aperture. So that's right, focal length, aperture, it's all in here. Just like a real camera, tell me different. So right now it's set to 2.8 and one thing I will say about this, it, I think it's a scaling thing. It does not feel like the f-stop is set to 2.8. It's hard to tell here because it's all just white, but if you want it to be a really shallow depth of field, so you know, right now this is 2.8, you can click on here, change it to a different value. Now it's f1. It's kind of a, it's kind of a tough scene to gauge it by, but if you want it to be a really shallow depth of field, a lot of times I end up having to go really low. So it's, it's not as one-to-one -one as a real camera would be. If, if you're thinking like, ooh, I want the, the depth of field to be super shallow, I'm gonna do F1. It like, you gotta just look at it and determine for yourself if that's as shallow as you want it to be. You could also click in the middle and just kind of scroll around. So there's 0 0.1, which is like more shallow than you could ever really get in real life. But you can, you can kind of scroll around and, and get it to be what you want it to be. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to do, well, not 0 0.1, I want to just do one. And we can always change it later. That's another one of the, the great things about the Blender workflow for an indecisive person like me. You can always change it later. So for this being where we are, as far as lighting, personally, the uh, logo down here is getting kind of dark and the this little band down there is a little dark as well. And that is, because you can move around in, in this um, rendered viewport as well, that darkness is out here. So I believe that if there was more white underneath on the bottom, it would, it would fill that in. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the eyeball for our plane earlier. I'm actually going to double click this plane and rename it white card so it's not confusing. And I'm going to put that plane down there and see if that accomplishes what I want it to accomplish. I am sure that it will, but for this video, I'm going to pretend like I don't know that. So I'm going to click on this plane called white card, I'm going to press R for rotate, Y for the Y axis, and then 90. Then I'm going to click the Y arrow, drag it over, click the X arrow, drag it over. I'm going to drop it down below our camera. Then I'm going to go back to the shading viewport, click on the camera, see what that did. So it seems like that wasn't it. So what I'm going to do is press R for rotate, X for the X axis, and then 90. So one thing to keep in mind with the camera is that the camera really is like this dot at the back. It gives you this physical thing to work with, but the camera really is this dot. So if you want this white card to be behind the camera, it has to be back behind the dot. So I'm going to go back into shading, and that uh, that's better. Starting to get there, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to do S for scale on the X axis, and just make it super wide. Now it's starting to starting to do its thing. So I'm going to because we can. This is another one of those Blender things where you know to have a giant 30 foot white card in real life. A little bit unrealistic, but here you can just have a huge never-ending whiteboard. So I'm going to do S again for scale, X for the X axis. I'm actually going to drag it over to the right a little bit. I'm going to R for rotate on the Z axis. Let's see what that looks like. For now, that's pretty good. I think that's, that's pretty good for now. Um, another thing that you can do Maybe that's too much. I'm going to do S for X, S for scale, X axis, make it a little bit smaller. Move it back over here, and then I'm going to press Tab to enter back into edit mode. Make sure that edge select is on. Get out of loop cut if you're still in loop cut. Click back on your little move arrows in this upper left-hand corner here. And I'm going to press E for extrude on the Y axis and just go out on the Y axis. And this is going to do something similar to like a V flat. So you can really like cover up all those areas that the gold is reflecting. I'm also going to lift this up a little bit. So I'm going to go back into the shading to see how that looks. It looks pretty close. So. Let's go nuts. Now I'm going to take that edge and just, because we're still in edit mode here, I'll just drag that out. Now I'm going to go back to the shading viewport, see what that looks like. That's looking pretty close, you know. I might bring it closer. It's pretty good. Then, what? We're still in edit mode in here. And so as you can see now, I, I'm just kind of going back and forth between this layout tab and the shading tab. And pretty much using the shading tab with the rendered viewport just to see like what it's looking like, moving it around in layout, and then going back to shading, which there are other ways to better organize that workflow, but for now, that's what we're doing. And then I think I want to see the left side filled in just a little bit more. So I'm going to click on this other edge, E for extrude, on the Y axis. See what that looks like. That's getting better. I pressed tab. Well, yeah, all right, tab. Now I'm going to drag it forward more. So I'm just basically playing around, trying to get the gold to look the way that I want it to look. 
That's fine, boom. I'm also going to press Command S and I'm going to save. Always save, never forget. So that's that, that was camera settings. So I hope that gives you something to play around with, something to get excited about, and kind of something that feels like the workflow for a regular camera, the workflow for lighting. And you can see how simple it can be to move the lights around, to add lights, to get something that looks pretty photorealistic. So since we're here, I think we could actually just do a little test render. I don't think that our render settings are really as locked in as I want them to be, but you can just go up in the upper left here to render and then render image is the first thing up here or press F12 apparently. I don't have an F12, but render image or F12. And that's going to give you your first little, uh, first little taste of a render here. And then because these, these uh, render settings are not dialed in, it looks like it wants this render to take 15 minutes. And so what you're seeing here is a preview. It's basically like the same preview that you're seeing before. And in 15, apparently 17 minutes. Yeah, so this is why you got to dial in those render settings that actually make sense because the, the defaults for Blender 3.0, I'm not a big fan of, of those default render settings, but that's what the rendered image would be. If, if you want to sit around for 20 minutes, um, this is what it would be. In the next video, we're going to get into texturing and coloring and making some basic set elements. The video after that, we're going to get into what some good rendering settings are for photorealism. So check back in for those. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm glad that we're doing this and you're here watching this video with me. Uh, comment if you have any questions. I will try to answer and uh, see what's going on.